And let's consider a YouTube manometer that is used often to measure pressure differences. Uh, this is a useful device when we are interested in determining fluid flow in uh, pipes or ducts. YouTube manometer is essentially a small diameter tube that is shaped as a U. It is uh, partially filled with a fluid which we call the manometer fluid. Typically that fluid is uh, mercury or a fluid of a known density and often that fluid is uh, colored so the fluid is uh, visible in the transparent uh, YouTube. So let's say that we are interested in doing some pressure measurements and we are going to use a, a YouTube manometer. So if we have a vessel and let's say we are interested in uh, knowing the pressure at location A then we will drill a hole, a small hole, on the side of that vessel which will be at the same height as location A. And we will then connect one arm of the U-tube to that hole. So the fluid from the vessel will enter the U-tube and it will push the manometer fluid down on one side of the arm while it will be raising the uh, fluid level in the U-tube on the other side and it will come to rest after some time. Now we can go ahead and determine what is the pressure at location A. So we will redraw this from the previous screen. Uh, we have that location A in the vessel and then we had the U-tube and as you recall the uh, fluid in the manometer itself had moved. So we had the location 2. Uh, this is where the manometer fluid had been pushed down. Uh, location 3 is at the same elevation as location 2. And then we have location 4 at the top of the fluid as it has moved up in the right hand side of that arm. So let's see how we can develop an equation to determine pressure at A using this YouTube manometer. Now it is easy to observe that location 2 and 3 are at the same elevation. Therefore the pressure at location 2 must equal the pressure at location 3. Let's see if we can use this fact to determine our equation for pressure. So at location 1, the pressure will be same as at location A, so it will be PA. Between locations 1 and 2, we have the fluid which is causing the pressure and that is equivalent to rho 1 G Z1. So at location 2, the pressure is PA plus rho 1 G Z1. Then on the right hand side of the manometer tube, at location 4, we have the atmospheric pressure because the fluid there is exposed to the atmosphere. And at location 3, the pressure will be P atmosphere plus rho m, that's the density of the manometer fluid, times G times Zm. Zm is the distance between location 3 and 4. Now considering the fact that the pressures at location 2 and 3 are the same because those locations are at the same elevation, we can write our equation as follows. Pa plus rho 1 g z1 equals p atmosphere plus rho m G times Zm. We can rearrange the terms as Pa equals rho m G Zm minus rho 1 G Z1 plus P atmosphere. And also observing the fact that the density of the manometer fluid, often mercury, 
is much higher than the fluid in the vessel. Therefore, the quantity rho 1 g z 1 will be much smaller than rho m time g time z m. So our equation simplifies to P A equals rho m g z m plus P atmosphere. So if we know the density of the manometer fluid rho m and also the displacement of the manometer fluid in the U-tube which is z m and since we know the atmospheric pressure we can determine the pressure at location A, P, A. Also note that in a manometer the length of manometer arms has no influence on the measurements. It's only the displacement of the manometer fluid that's used in determining the pressure.